So elements are still about the same. We've got a little bit of wind, a few flakes flying. We are gonna make some more progress today, but the fun part is about to begin because we're gonna start incorporating some more boulders in along that top edge. And this is where that custom look really comes together. So let's get going. We've got an interesting setup today, huh? <laughs> because we're gonna start the brick wall today. So Jack or Dan, we're gonna take over and as this process is happening, explaining how this wall is getting put together and some of the things that we're considering. All right, so we got the bottom course of this wall set. Great teamwork by Luis and I. So we got it set all the way through here. I wanted to show you something real quick on a little tip and trick. So sometimes people will go look at the level and see that it's level, but what they won't look at is actually underneath of the level all the way across. Sometimes you'll get a belly in your wall stone or whatever hard surface you're putting in. So what you actually want to do is get down here below and make sure that there isn't a line all the way across there so that you know your blocks are actually truly level and one of the ways that I do that as well is I actually run it across three block instead of just the two that I'm setting off of so the next one I'm setting and the one that I just set I'm always running it back to that third block and that allows me to stay true and then another way we're troubleshooting it at least you want to grab that six foot level real quick is we know that we're 11 courses up plus our cap of our patio which we're just using brick so what we've been doing is going back checking it off the patio all the way across here just to make sure that we're actually truly level and I believe we've been 48 and a go down a little bit Luis You're not quite level there right there. there you go so yeah we're going right between 48 and a quarter so we know we're good there so that's a double check of how you can make sure that you're on the right elevation so that you don't get 10 courses up and then realize that you're an inch or two off we're doing our double checking off of our base course double checking it with the patio and it's easy peasy just like that so the next thing we're going to do now is we're going to come back backfill behind this course lock this one in and then we've got geo grid over there that we're going to cut right there and put a layer of geo grid on before we set our second course this thing's really coming together great i think jack and steve are over there working on the intake bay hard at work we're going to stay in our nice warm tent right it's summer season thing I do is I also run a torpedo level so that I can check and make sure that my block is level back and forth it's just easier to do the combo they do make a level I believe that is actually a T level we just don't have one in our arsenal yet so then what we're gonna do is take this bucket of chips Start dumping it back behind, lock these in, pack that in behind, get this level across here, locked in all the way around the back, and then we'll put our geo grid. got our four jet line already ran. We'll end up adding our reducer bushing and lock line fittings in those later this week. We've got two courses of our retaining wall. we got 11 courses total, so nine more to go. We're gonna go every two courses. We're gonna add this geo grid. We've already got three pieces back there, locked in, sandwiched between the base layer and the second layer per row. So we're gonna go one more and then add another one. So we'll walk you through that when we get to that point. Just wanted to show that this is important because we're going so high we've got to help lock that wall in helps grab it and pull it back into the bank we'll end up pulling that geo grid back back filling that with our chips so that aggregate rock will actually lock together and tie that back into that hillside actually been doing instead of bringing this flat and up I'm actually scooping out a handful of gravel back behind there to help kind of lock that in with an extra little bit of bend in the geo grid because we've got about two foot of it here and we cut it in three pieces it really doesn't get us the length we need so this will actually help lock and as we build up that next layer and backfill this as well it'll help lock that in and pull this wall in against that bank It's important. 
important to make sure that your lines are matching up and you've always got at least about a 20-30% overlap on your joints because that's what makes your ultimate strength of your wall. So what I did there was I large, large, because that's what we were down there, but we actually offset this way about that much. So I'm changing it out with the medium so that I can keep carrying the running bond across. What's up guys? We're cruising away at this pond. It's turning out really nice. I'm really looking forward to how this thing's gonna turn out. Dan and Luis, as you guys can see, they're putting that wall together. There's gonna be four jets pushing up along that wall, and we've mentioned this before, but it's just nice to have that circulation, especially with such a deep pond. We wanna circulate all that water on the bottom, try to get everything moving, any debris that's not gonna be at the bottom. We wanna get that suspended so that it comes into an intake bay. And as you can see, that's what Steve and I are working on right now is this intake bay. So it's 15 small aqua locks, and then obviously our pump vault and our extension. So in this area, this is pretty much gonna be our skimmer on steroids. And funny thing is, we actually do have a skimmer in this skimmer on steroids. This is gonna be more of like, it's gonna be pulling all that debris from that middle column of water in the pond. And that skimmer is gonna be pulling from that top section of the pond, pulling all that surface debris into that skimmer so the homeowners can just pull that basket out and dump it wherever they want to. And when we use these aqua blocks in intake bays and pondless reservoirs, we take our vault, we always like to cut our aqua blocks. In this case, we have a one full aqua block sitting over that boat right here. See that boot down there, right here. We'll set an aqua block on top of that, and so that allows us to have a nice secure platform. So having one full aqua block will be nice and secure. And then we're gonna put one back behind here. So as you can see, we have these support systems inside this aqua block. I'm gonna cut along this right here, and that's gonna give me a nice small cube to fit back behind that pump ball. So as you guys can see, we have this rectangular cube that we're gonna stick back behind Here's this. the big question. Did you cut it straight? Hey, not bad, man. Who's on the pressure? Who's on camera this time doing it? Uh -huh. That's good. Good job, Jackson, Jackie. So we always take the cut edge and we put it in toward the vault so then that way there's no sharp points for that liner to get punctured. I mean, obviously we have this rock pad, but we're just trying to be safe about it. Extra insurance. So we'll take this back here and then I'll take the extra panels that we have from our aqua block and I'll stick them back behind there. So it allows us to have a straight line back here to kind of get that rigidity out of the aqua block. gotta stop and appreciate your work man oh you gotta appreciate your work. It's a pretty sexy wall i gotta say it's the sexiest wall i've ever seen you heard it here people at least two thumbs up steve says it's a sexy wall i'll give it two thumbs up are still about the same. We've got a little bit of wind, a few flakes flying, but we are gonna make some, some more progress today. We're continuing to work on that architectural wall, but the fun part is about to begin because we're gonna start incorporating some more boulders in along that top edge, and this is where that custom look really comes together. So this is where that custom look really starts coming together. Bricks are going to be carved in and around those rocks that are gonna be on that top edge, giving it that super, super custom look. It's just gonna turn out incredible. This is the fun part about the job. You're allowed the opportunity to start being artistic and start taking some chances, and I think it's gonna turn out incredible. So we're gonna keep rolling, get the tent out of here so that we've got some headroom to play with, but it's turning out awesome. So let's get going. Down. 
getting to that point where we're gonna work in this rock right here, this flat piece on top of the brick wall. So it's important to know the elevations, know where water level is, because you don't want the bottom of the rock to be above water, but we also want it to be tall enough that it will retain the decomposed granite that'll be on the backside, but also it'll help set this peninsula in through here. So we're getting ready to set this. I'm really, really loving how the progress is happening. And I'm gonna put the camera down and we'll show you here in a sec. So this is the type of precision that we were talking about, how we we're gonna cut the bricks as if the wall is built around the boulder. So we set the boulder on top of this course of brick, and then Dan and Luis are working very hard at trying to really match up and mimic all of the curves and contours of this rock. So they're continuing along this course. They've stopped here, of course, and they're gonna continue this way and continue that course all the way around to what's going to have another rock sitting right there. So just wanted to stop and show you, and this is very, very, tedious they're measuring every brick about every inch and figuring out the distance from top of this course all the way up to the rock and really making everything fit nice and snug and perfect so it's looking beautiful it will end up being such a statement having these huge big rocks this is a nice flat slab for people to sit on dangle their feet all the way down and then of course we've got Jack Steve and myself continuing to work on rocking in with boulders around this bottom section of pond everything out along this side so we're gonna hopefully get this little section done today and then drop that other big boulder in back behind this rock and then that way the wall can get finished tomorrow in between the two boulders. what's so unique about some of the stuff that we do is just the attention to detail and really trying to match up joints with these rocks. This rock right here, this big tall skinny guy is nestled back behind these rocks and just how everything kind of fits together. And there's different layers, there's a lot of different elevations, but it's just so important to take your time and not really throw this stuff together. So I think that was something I wanted to point out. Jack's doing a fantastic job with Steve doing this little avalanche landslide area that we're so accustomed to doing in between these big boulders. 